Hello everyone, this is Mr. C5 again, and this is going to be my late game tutorial, still part of the basics tutorial video series to uh, help players that are new to Civilization uh, play the Civilization 5 game. Uh, so yeah, this is very much going to be still about the basics, although by now we're in the late game, so there's a little, uh, it's a, getting a little more complicated. But if you're uh, an old player of Civ, uh, you probably won't learn as much uh, from this as a uh, brand new player will. If you're new, this video is for you. So uh, I'm still continuing my uh, game with the Japanese on my Pangea that I had before. As you can tell, I'm just going to go very quickly over the uh, world situation. How's it going? So this was my empire. I took over the French during the combat tutorial, the last one that I... Uh, posted and then eventually yeah I took over a little bit more and so I've exterminated exterminated the uh, Ottomans they are gone bye bye and the Romans are the only other civ left uh, they have one two three four five six seven four of cities four of which are not very good so should not be much of a challenge I've actually been exploring I got myself a naval unit and I've been scouring the map for uh, islands and stuff and so I've met a couple more city-states like Belgrade over here and Venice over here sort of interesting stuff and right now I am in the uh, modern era I've just entered the modern, the modern era so you can tell that my buildings look a little more uh, futuristic than they did in past uh, videos they're looking at uh, the skyscrapers and uh, yeah so they look a little more modern and I am in 1906, turn 326, so I'm fairly advanced in the game. So this is going to be the advanced, sort of advanced late game tutorial where I'll be talking about some more general stuff. There's quite a bit to cover. have my little cue card with me as usual, filled with info. And I'm going to start by talking about a couple of unit types that I couldn't talk about in the last uh, video, in the combat video, because I didn't have those units. And the first one that I have here, the frigate. The frigate is a naval unit, uh, so it can only enter uh, ocean tiles and coastal tiles. Uh, naval units um, can only be built in uh, cities that are along, uh, that have access to the ocean. So any city that uh, is built directly next to a coastal tile can build uh, naval units. If you have a city, for example, like uh, Tokyo here. Tokyo, first of all, has access to a lake, but I don't think that allows it to buy to build. A, yeah, no, it cannot. You can't put naval units in this. But Tokyo, actually, its uh, city radius does have coast uh, within it. This is three tiles away, but still, Tokyo can is not considered a uh, coastal city. It cannot build uh, naval units. And so, naval units, as I said before, are just ranged units that are at sea. That's it. So they have a uh, strength and a ranged attack. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference is, though. I think this is when they're attacked, and this is when they attack. So that's the difference. So that they um, deal less damage than they can take overall. And they have access to a bunch of promotions. I have the Great Lighthouse, for example. So this gives all my naval units more movement and more sight. And then they have a lot of uh, promotions that are kind of the equivalent of the land units one. And they cannot, obviously, melee attack. They can only range attack. Um, one thing about naval units is that they have a uh, fairly large sight radius. You can see that this uh, little dude, this little frigate here, can see up to three tiles away. That's a lot. And it has quite a lot of uh, movement points. I've actually just used them all, but I believe the frigate has something like five or six movement points, including you know the one that it gets from the Great Lighthouse. But still, that's uh, pretty good. It's a lot of movement, so you can explore very quickly. I've explored all of this on this side and then all of this on this side with uh, just this frigate here. So, uh, very good. And um, I'm also going to say something very quickly about embarked units. Embarked units are land units that have uh, ventured out into the uh, sea uh, or into the ocean because there are no transports in Civ 5. So, land units just uh, make, make do on their own. They're always carrying a little canoe with them, and when they need to uh, take a dip, they just drop the canoe, get into it, and then they can paddle. Embarked uh, land units are very slow, they don't see very far, so they have limited visibility, and they are very weak against actual naval units. Actual naval units can just uh, kill, most of the time they'll kill um, embarked land units in one shot. So it's very, very dangerous to embark if you don't have a navy to support your embarked units. 
And so that's one of the uh, that's one of the best uses for having a navy and kind of uh, keeping uh, other players away from your coast, uh, keeping them uh, keeping their embark units away from entering your territory. Because obviously, if you have uh, strong land defenses, uh, you you know the enemy's not going to try to rush into them. Sometimes they'll just try to embark its units and then go around and try to land on somewhere that's not very well defended. You know, see the uh, D Day during World War Two. And uh, that's it. Now, naval units can still, uh, they have uh, a range attack that you can use against ground targets. So they can bombard ground units. They can even uh, bombard cities and lower their hit points. So eventually, if you uh, want to, if you have a very powerful navy, you can t uh, use it to take over coastal cities very easily or just to play pirate. The one thing that you cannot do, though, uh, with naval units that you could do before in the previous Civ 5 games is bomb in previous Civ game not Civ 5 games in uh, previous Civilization games you could bombard improvements on tiles and you could destroy them now you cannot do that uh, in Civ 5 you do need to get a land unit and to pillage the improvements same thing with uh, air units which is actually the next type of unit that I want to talk about because I have one right here so uh, on top of the uh, city combat strength if you have an air unit You'll have that little number here, and you can select your air unit. I have a zero. The zero is a basic, uh, it's the equivalent of a fighter, but it's the uh, unique Japanese uh, unit, the second one, the first one being the samurai. And so air units are very special. Uh, they are very much a late game unit, although you can build naval units uh, pretty much from the, almost from the beginning. The uh, first technology is sailing. There we go. With sailing here, which is an ancient era tech, you can build triremes, which are uh, stuck to uh, the coast. They cannot go into the ocean, and you can build work boats, which are just workers on a boat. Um, so you can build uh, naval units very early, but to build air units, you need to go all the way to flight here, which is a late industrial era uh, tech. I've actually just uh, left the industrial era and just entered the uh, modern era here. So flight's a very, very late tech. Um, and so air units will usually come in late in the game. But they are very powerful. The first thing that they have... Uh, let me see... Air recon, first of all. Uh, air units are stuck in cities. They cannot move around the map. They have to uh, stay based in cities. And so you can tell them to rebase with this little button here to change cities. So I could just uh, move it to Istanbul or then move it all the way back to another one of my cities. And there is a range for rebasing. There we go. You can see the blue line here. This is how far my unit, uh, my uh, zero can rebase. But that's very far. So uh, air units can move to the front extremely quickly. But they are stuck inside cities. They don't actually move around the map. Uh, and the first ability that they have when they're based in a city is that they reveal six tiles around the city uh, just from their being there, kind of from con uh, conducting patrols, if you will, conducting air patrols. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Having that little zero over there is revealing all this land here all the way into the Roman Empire. So that's it's having air units on the front lines is a very good idea to kind of give you uh, more info about what's going around. And um, air units are flying range units pretty much in that they can... Uh, conduct airstrikes, so they'll just uh, attack uh, a unit or a city, uh, they'll fly overhead and then pelt them with um, you know, their bombs or their machine guns, and they are very hard to stop. Uh, there's, uh, I believe, depending on the type of unit that you attack with an air unit, that unit that you attack will have a chance to intercept the aircraft, and if they intercept it, then they shoot it for some damage. Uh, and uh, Depending on which type of air unit you're using, then you have a greater or a lesser chance of taking damage. The zero is a fighter, so it's not a very good uh, uh, use of the zero to have it uh, strafe ground targets. The zero, since it's a fighter, is actually uh, much better off trying to uh, gain uh, air control, air supremacy, if you will. And that's ha there are a couple more uh, things you can do here. Uh, to do exactly that. The first one is Air Sweep. Air Sweep is a fighter-only um, ability, and it basically tells it to go somewhere and then to try to uh, sweep an area for 
air and ground-based interceptor cling to wear for future airstrikes. So the Zero is going to come out. It's going to try to find a target to engage. So it's going to try to engage other fighters, or it's going to try to engage, uh, you know, surface-to-air missile batteries or something like that, just to clear the way so that your bombers, which are another kind of... Uh, uh, flying unit can then uh, proceed and uh, bomb targets. I'm actually, oh, never mind, I can't build a unit here. I need a city that I actually control, such as Tokyo. There we go. I just researched bomber tags. I'm going to purchase a bomber so we can see it next turn, see it in action. Um, but for now, I'm just going to stick to my zero. So, okay, airstrike, air sweep, rebase. They can also intercept. Intercept is a defensive uh, option you can uh, select for your fighters. And if you tell them to intercept, they're kind of going to go on a patrol around your city. And if there are any air units that try to either strike units in your territory around the zero, or that try to bomb anything, or that come in to uh, do air sweeps of their own, the zero is going to launch and it's going to intercept them. Uh, so it's a very, very uh, defensive uh, kind of uh, uh, mission. So if, you don't, if you're not doing anything, anything with your fighters, you're not uh, attacking other air units, or you're not striking, it's usually a good idea just to set it on intercept. It's a little bit like telling a unit to fortify and to stay uh, you know, on the alert, uh, so to speak. Let's see, do I need to improve anything here with my little worker? Nope, I have quite a few cities now. I took over you know, the entire Ottoman Empire, so it's taking me a while to figure out what I need to do, where I need to uh, build improvements and uh, all that. This little worker here. And for some reason, this is a bug that I've encountered very often in the game, and it's extremely annoying. For some reason, right now, the Romans and I have open borders, even though we have no deal for open borders. The last one we had was 150 turns ago. For some reason, we're stuck. So, like, my little worker can go through their territory, no problem. It's extremely annoying. So, Osaka has finished his circus. My happiness, as you can see, is a little low because I've just gained so many cities. If you look at the bottom in red, that I'm getting 139 total unhappiness because I have... Tw 12 generated from the number of cities, that's very little. I'm getting 127 on happiness just from how large my cities are, so I do need to build buildings to uh, compensate that. For now, I'm going to build a Nopra house because I need more culture. There we go. So that was air units. That was uh, naval units, uh, which I couldn't talk about in the last video because I didn't have any of them. And very briefly, before we go to the next turn, I do want to talk about a couple more uh, informational screens that you can consult if you're looking for uh, more info. If you look over here, this, this is the diplomacy screen. I've already gone into this in the mid-game tutorial. Nothing new here. This is the social policy big button. So you'll get to the same places if you click this here or if you click the notification on the side here when you get a... Uh, enough culture to acquire a new policy. This here is the advisor screen, and this is a very interesting screen uh, because you get your four advisors, the economic one, the foreign one, the military one, and the science one. If you've uh, played a, a game of Civ Five, you probably had them pop up in the top right corner of uh, the screen, you know, regularly just to tell you stuff that you already know and that you really don't want to know. That, by the way, is in the options, in the game options, and it is... There we go, advisor level here. So if you're new to Civ, they'll just pop up every two seconds to talk your ear off about everything. If you're new to Civ 5, they'll be a little less in, uh, invasive. Experienced player, they'll very rarely say anything, and I'm at no advice, because uh, screw it, I know everything about Civ, I don't need your advice, guys. Uh, but if you click here, they will give you a very specific advice about your Empire situation, and they're of varying... Uh, interest. So the foreign advisor, for example, saying that we've seen a number of Roman Empire units around their borders. This may be a prelude to an attack. Um, if you've seen the Romans, they are using spearmen and crossbowmen, I think, right now, while I'm up to using uh, 20th century infantry and artillery, which has a range of three and can even fire over hills and mountains. So I'm not that worried. Um, not very uh, useful info from the foreign advisor overall. I'm not a big fan of her. She, uh, you know, she's always talking about what the city states want, and it's not very interesting. The science advisor is very succinct, so for that I love him compared to the foreign advisor. He's just uh, telling you. He's always going to tell you basically build libraries, build public schools, build universities, which is like, yeah, okay, thanks. I knew that. 
Um, the military advisor is going to, usually he's very interesting because he'll uh, be able to let you gauge how strong other people are. And he'll uh, tell you, you know, sort of which uh, technologies you should uh, research if you want to get a more powerful unit. So he's telling me that I could make submarines if I researched uh, refrigeration, but I'm researching combustion because I want tanks, which are even better. 